Hello guys, welcome to the Zoom call. This is today we're going to discuss about asset allocations and then using those asset allocations, we will assess the simulation results. Basically, how effective is the asset allocation? That's uh, the outcome of this uh, Zoom analysis. We're going to try out several asset allocation strategies and using a simulation tool like Monte Carlo simulation, which can simulate 10, up to 10,000 scenarios and then do the histogram and come up with the percentile results. And I'll show you all these things. The, the tool itself, the simulation tool is free. I'll also give you the website and everything. So you'll get to see this. This is a very good um, um, simulation tool. And uh, you can play around with your numbers again and again. The free version allows you to do it outside. And of course, you want to subscribe. They have more other uh, financial analysis also. But Monte Carlo is very popular. All right. So with that said, let's go to the next slide. All right. So this I'm not trying to recommend here buy this, buy that, or have this type of asset allocation, right? This is basically learning how, why asset allocation is very important. See, you may be very disciplined to put maximum 401k each month, but if you are not good at where you are investing, then your uh, rate of return will be impacted. And over 20 years, the snowball will be impacted, the size, the size of the nest egg. So it's not only the discipline to um, invest on a regular basis, not only the discipline to invest maximum amount, but it's also important to assess where you are investing and how you change your strategy as you get older. So this exercise is going to focus on where part, where are you going to uh, invest? And I'm not trying you trying to tell you that buy this ETF or mutual funds or, or have this strategy. Each person's risk analysis is different. Risk tolerance is different. So you have to be judge uh, of that of that decision and also the research part, right? So you will always do your due, due diligence. And then this is your hard-earned money. So always do your research. Do what is comfortable to you. Don't blindly believe anyone, including Juan Buffet, including myself, but take it as a, you know, um, side opinion, feedback, someone learned from through experience, maybe you can learn from that, that kind of thing. But in the end, it's your research. And then the simulation, basically is simulation, how can you forecast future, right? So what simulation does is it looks at the past performances of the assets we pick. And the past performance may not repeat again in future, right? That, that's a very popular saying. Just because I got 20% returns in VGT last uh, 10 years, that doesn't mean it may happen next year. It could be more, it could be less, right? So, but it's a good benchmark. If, if something performed very well in the past, there is a high probability that it will continue unless the tap technology deprecates or the demographic changes happens, the behavior of consumers have changed, that kind of stuff, right? So, but we will take it as a simulation result. We will take it as that's what the simulation says based on past. It looks at the past performance of those assets and it also does the statistical analysis. So you have option to pick uh, multiple methodology. All right, so that's that. Now, the where part, right? So where's that where part, right? So this is one example. So you are pretty smart. It's at a very young age, at the age of 25, you're putting $1,000 each month for next 40 years. And that, so at 65, these are the numbers on the right side, right column. These are the numbers of the nest egg. And it can vary from 6% gives you almost 2 million. And say 10% gives you 6.3 million. So such a big difference that the one I'm trying to say is this is that where part from 6% to 12%. That's your decision. That's your decision where to invest. So asset allocation is that is actually answering the where part. 
In your strategy may change from 25 to 30, 40 years of age, you are aggressive, then you may go milder, then you go conservative, right? That differs from person to person. That is not something that you can find in a textbook and do it blindly. That's your risk tolerance, your strategy. You know, are you, you know, not with the target, then you're going to play some aggressive game. Or if you are happy with what you have right now, you're going to go conservative, right? So that's that differs from person to person. All right, so this is where we're going to focus, column three. This is what is what we are focusing. Maximum is better. Maximum uh, returns always comes with risk. So it's a balance of risk reward. All right, so diversification. What is diversification, right? So we could be diversifying across, diversifying across sectors and industries. Example are technology, healthcare, energy, or consumer staples. Right now, with the inflation, with the recession, consumer staples may come back. Energy is is pretty hot right now, and technology, you know, it's is going through uh, bloodshed right now. Uh, this could be diversifying across the companies: Apple versus Tesla, GM, Walmart, Mastercard. Right. Tesla is hot right now. Nvidia has gone down because of the pandemic. Uh, people are not playing that many video games. The, the demand has gone down with that chips, right? The Bitcoin portion is also hurting them. Uh, across the asset classes, stocks versus bonds versus funds. Across the borders, borders within the U.S., outside U.S., international versus global. So international is everything outside U.S. Global is inclusive of U.S. And then some may be putting in the emerging markets like BRIC, BRIC countries, right? And then time frames, short term, long term bonds. Right. So diversification is really in all directions. So across so many uh, parameters. And so one example here is, and I had posted this in our TMC group, and this is how it started actually. So the classic example from Investopedia on diversification where they suggest, and this is just a suggestion from their side. We don't know how old the investor is, the age bracket and all that, but they're giving an example. So large cap is 28 percent, small mid is 18, international is 10, and so on. Imagining stocks is 4 percent. Bonds are there 12 percent, and then real estate. In our case, um, since we cannot measure the real estate uh, on the stocks front side, we may we can use the REITs, right? R E I T S. So that's one example. That's one, example. one example. All right, and with this uh, portfolio, we'll see uh, how the return. So what I've done is for today's session, I've created portfolios or assets, asset uh, portfolios with assets. So for example, an aggressive portfolio, aggressive asset allocation could have 25% in S&P 500 ETF. VOO is S&P 500. QQQ is NASDAQ's top 100 companies. VGT is technology and VTA is total stock market. So on the right side, you see 360 companies in VGT, 4,000 in total stock market. Right. So I'm saying put 25, 25, 35, 15. This is the diversification uh, rule for, of course, say aggressive portfolio. Same way I have semi-aggressive, moderate. So we have four portfolios here. And then these are ETFs. So then I said, let's do mutual funds. ETFs, mutual funds are quite same, or they're same. Uh, <clears throat> the way they are traded is slightly different. The speed at which the orders are filled is different. But say mutual funds, you know, same thing. We have S&P 500 here, then VDIGX. This is a dividend-based mutual fund. People love dividends, so they're going to go with that one. 42 dividend stocks are there. Then VBIAX is 3,500 companies. And then VWENX, this is, these are 79 companies. So these are three more um, asset allocations here. Right. So the Investopedia one is also there. And then this seven are there. All right. So um, at a high level, if you see your time on the blue planet, you are working uh, possibly till 65. 
So you gonna work and invest in 401k brokerage IRS with a specific strategy, specific allocation strategy. You want the assets to grow as fast as you can with your risk tolerance, right? So we have asset allocation one. This is a type of asset allocation that we'll implement. And then when you retire, you're gonna slow down, you're gonna play conservative. So you have an asset allocation, which is conservative. Okay, so you may, this is the simplest model here, where you have only two asset allocations. That could be in the work life, if you are 30 years old, you may have three different types of strategies from 30 to 40, I'm gonna be super aggressive, then I'm gonna slightly moderate, and then I'm gonna semi mod whatever that, that strategy you have. So you may have like three assets here. This is very important. Asset allocation is needs to be decided on a paper first, looking at your risk tolerance, and then you can plan this. In this case, it's very simple. I have only two asset allocations. All right. So that's that. Now let's understand some terms because this will be used in uh, simulation. All right. So one uh, is CAGR. CAGR stands for compound annual growth rate. So it's nothing but average annual return. Right, so if you are say here, this is an example of a salary. Right, from 2010 to 2018, each salary is mentioned here. So what we are trying to find out is on an average, how much your salary increased each year on an average. So Kager is nothing but 14%. So 14% return on an average for each year was was received. So that 36,000 became 102,000 in 2018. It's a nothing but it's an average yearly return, right? When someone says KGR of 12, that means however number of years the investment went through, on an average, you got 12% each year. All right, the next thing is the data profile. So what is that sample data that we're going to use to simulate, right? As an example, so I came up with a generic, and then, of course, you guys will have freedom to change and match your values. So I'm going to say an individual of 45 years old who has a total of 400K cash. So cash, I mean, it could be 401K brokerage, IRS, everything that's tangible cash. And then we are excluding the house because house, you're going to live in the house even in the retired life. So let's look only at the cash right now because cash is what is invested in stocks, bonds, and so on, and that's what we're gonna simulate, how much it's gonna grow or not, right? Then we're gonna assume that the guy wants to retire at 60. He's gonna live for a total 80 years. So he has a remaining 15 years of work life. 15 years is gonna put his 401k and so on and invest. And then after he retires, he's gonna live for another 20 years, right? From 60 to 80. He's going to withdraw 4% per year when he retires. So starting from 60, 60th age, he's going to every year withdraw 4% till he dies. The asset allocations we have in our list is four ETFs, three mutual funds, one in Estupidia, and I have an example of a stocks allocation. Everything stocks, 20 stocks. This is super aggressive. All right, so this is the testing data that we're going to use to simulate. You also need to understand the percentile math. So the, the results from the simulation will be broken down by the percentiles. And then it basically your job is to pick where you, you think you will fit. So percentile, like simply speaking, is say if someone says, and I'm in the 95th percentile, that means only 5% of students scored equal or higher than you. If you are here, then only 5% scored higher than you. And if you are 80%, then 20% are above you, but 80% are below you. So you are at the 88% line, right? So remember this. So the simulation will come with 25 percentile. So, so out of 10,000 results, 2,000 results are saying that your portfolio will become 5 million, for example. Then another uh, 
5,000 are saying, no, no, it's going to be more than that. So you, the, the result set of 10,000 simulations will be broken down into the percentile buckets. Now you will decide what you want. So in my case, I use usually 50 percentile. So 50-50 chances. 50% 50 50 portfolios are saying, I'm going to make less than X amount. And 50% is saying, oh, no, no, I'm going to make more. Right? And you will see in the Excel, uh, in the demo. All right, so that's Excel, and that's PowerPoint. And now we're going to go to the screen of simulation. So this is the website. And let's go from the first screen here. This is their homepage. So don't be busy right now reading all these things because then you'll lose focus. But the website URL is portfoliovisualizer.com. You can write it down, portfoliovisualizer.com. It is, of course, a subscription-based website, but the free tools are, the tools are still available. You may not be able to save your data. If you give them money, then you can save the data, right? So in this case, we're going to go under tools. And these are so many tools. These tools are actually used by investors and investment firms and so on, all those analysts and those guys. In our case, we're going to use the portfolio analysis section in which there are this last two, the Monte Carlo and financial world. So we'll start with Monte Carlo. So I clicked it and it's simply, it's explaining uh, what are those drop-down values and all that. And I'll explain when we encounter those drop-downs. So here, first of all, it's saying, what is your initial amount? Well, or what do you have? What is that cash value? So as I said, in that profile, data profile, we're going to have four, 400,000, right? So that's 400, yes, 400,000. And then it's asking, are you going to withdraw each year? Let's say I'm not going to withdraw. I'm not going to even, I'm not even mentioning about contributions right now. Then it's asking me, how, what is the simulation period? So 400,000 till for next 30 years. So in my case, this current analysis I'm doing is, I want to see what will happen to 400,000 in say next 15 years. So I'm 45 and at age of 60, what will be that 400 case? So I'm going to pick 15. I want to see what's going to happen at the 15th, end of 15th year. Tax treatment, we'll leave it as pre-tax right now. Simulation model. So you're saying, are you going to look at the historical returns or statistical mean, or do you have a forecast? This, that. So I'm going to use historical right now. And we use the full history of those performance returns. Bootstrap, I'm going to leave the same sequence of return risks. So basically, worse out of those 15 years, how many were worse, this, that, you can use this. I'm going to use default value. Inflation, I'm going to use the historical inflation. And in this case, the thing is going to look at 2.5% or so. Rebalancing, if specific mutual fund or stock goes super high and 5% Amazon becomes 8%, then you need to rebalance. So they're saying how frequently you're going to rebalance. In our case, we're going to use the default value of annual. All right. And then here it's asking, so this is our asset allocation. This is the that variable that we're talking about. This is this is where the where place, right? So here they have pre-filled the full stock market, large cap. You can pick one of this and give the percentage. Right. So we can do that. So in this case, let's do this. So I'm going to say. Let's have a large cap, large cap value of 25%. And uh, let's have a mid mid cap or so let's have some growth also. And uh, growth, I'm gonna make 20%. And mid cap the whole thing. So 25, 45, and let's have 70% now. And then the remaining, um, the remaining I'm gonna use. Oh, I got international all that. Too. Let's say small cap. I'm taking more risk actually with the small test, but let's see. All right. So I did fill out my asset allocation randomly right now, and I'm gonna run the simulation. All 
Again, the simulation is show me what's going to happen to 400,000 in the next 15 years with looking at the historical returns. And I'm going to balance each year with this breakdown of asset allocation. And it's showing me what I inputted. And here's the answers. So see those percentiles I'm saying. 10th percentile, 25th percentile, 50th, 75th, 90th. So these percentiles are, as I said, uh, you know, a 25th percentile means 75% results were above 25th percentile, right? So in my case, I feel comfortable with 50 percentile. So for this analysis, we'll constantly you look at 50 percentile. So in 50th percentile, the Kager comes out 12.16. It thinks that we're going to gain 12.16 based on this allocation. And that comes out to that comes out to 2.2 million dollars. 400k in 15 years will become 2.2 million dollars, right? So more than 5x, 5.4, 5.5. .5. So and then so that's nominal. Nominal is before inflation, which is if you do the real. Uh, numbers, which is today's numbers, it will be 1.2 million. All right. So the simulation is saying you're going to make 2.2 millions. Now the drawdown is what is that max drop in 15 years? It could go as low as 33 percent. All right. And then the safe withdrawal and perpetual. Perpetual is if you are we are, we are looking at 4 percent, but they are saying you can withdraw up to 7.39 each year. Right. And then this is the line chart with those percentiles. So it will, it is, again, this is simulation. And say at the 10th year, so you're 55. These are the numbers. So 50th percentile is 1.281. That's a nominal uh, number. Uh, that doesn't include inflation factor. But say here, so you can see 50th percentile is 2.236, which is this guy. Right. So you can uh, go around this. And then the histograms are, are let's start with this, simulation assets. So you're saying we picked four assets and the inflation, the CAGR, and volatility, how big is the volatility? See, small cap is a high volatility, smaller companies. And large cap will have the lowest, smallest. Right. So that's that, expected returns. So the return probabilities are, say, anything uh, greater than 70 is good. That's what they say. So if you see here in the first year, the probability is very low in this column. But the 10th year, so over longer horizon, the probability improves, right? So you can see that 15 years, uh, first three, these guys are very high probability. So your return above 5%, the Kager return above 5% is 100% guaranteed. The financial analysts say anything about 70% is going to happen. So even 82, so I see 7.5 is, is definitely guaranteed. Uh, Dinesh Bhai? Yes. Question. I am, so when I look at the percentiles, I'm still a little not clear on what the percentiles are telling me. I'll, tell, I'll show you okay. in the next screen, in the histograms, it will be easier for me to explain. Okay. okay. So just pause, then I'll ask you if you're comfortable. Let me, let me jump there now. In fact, it is the next screen. So there you go. So now let me first explain to you what is this chart, right? It's a histogram. And here it ran the simulation 10,000 times. 10,000 portfolios were simulated 10,000 scenarios. So market went down, market, this sector went up, small caps went down, all possible permutations, combinations. There are $10,000, 10,000 simulations. And with that, each bar here is the number of simulation runs. So in this case, it's almost 1,000. So 1,000 simulations are saying that your portfolio will grow anywhere from half million to one million. Thousand are saying that much. 
about 1400 are saying, no, no, it's going to be between 1 and 1.5, and so on. There are some portfolios that are saying you're going to have $6 million. Some portfolios, so this is probably 200 simulations came back and saying $6 million is what you're going to make after 15 years. So now here, I picked 50%. That means 5,000 simulations are above my number and 5,000 are below my number, right? So I'm here somewhere. If you had 80 percent simulate, 80 percentile, you would be here. 80 percentile is 4.5 million. That means most of the 80 percent results were less than your portfolio. Only 20 percent were above you. All right. So let's say, a, and I think there's 75. So four, 4 million and 4.5 4 million. So let's see the number. Okay, it's three, four, five, four. This is what at 75 percentile. Three, four, five, four. So it's here actually. 75 percent. So these are, if I add all these numbers, these are probably 7,500 simulations. Okay. All right, so now you decide which per you want to pick. So I pick 50 50. Does it answer your question, Satish? Yes, now it's clearer. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So this is the variability that no one can predict. I'm expecting 3 million and it could go 6,500. Last 10 years was a surprise too. Right? These are max drawdowns. That means how many simulations we're seeing, I'm going to have loss as big as 43%. That's what this is saying. There were some simulations where it showed 60% drops in your portfolio. All right, so these are the total runs of this histogram is 10,000. Right, and then the Kager is mentioned here. And then the, the mean and the standard deviation is also mentioned here. The inflation was used from 72 to 2021. And uh, they have assets data. These all these large assets, large cap value. And these these data, this data is already there. But now the next question is, what is I have specific ETFs and all that, right? So I will show you those things. So in the portfolio type, I'm going to pick the tickers, and then in tickers. Either I put the tickers here manually, type it in, or in my case, I'm going to upload a portfolio of ETFs or whatever I have. So I have a CSV file. I'm going to go here, and I already created those CFCs, CFVs for that I showed in the PowerPoint. And let's say I'm going to start with aggressive. So aggressive Configuration is 25% in S&P 500, 25% in NASDAQ top 100, uh, with GTS 35. So I'm taking a lot of risk, technology sector, and this is overall stock market. All right, now I'm going to run it. And now I have 18.78. I think it's larger than the previous number. And I have $5.2 million. So this is, yeah, the other one was, 5.5x, and this one is almost 11x, more, 12x. Well, 11 and 12, between 11 and 12x. Because I'm, I'm definitely taking a lot of risk with VGT and so on. Let's take another example, another uh, portfolio or asset allocation. And I'm going to say, uh, let's do the Investopedia. Right, so Investopedia had that pie with so many slices. And um, one of them, I had to use the real estate uh, index fund from Vanguard to, to replace that housing portion. I think it's this guy. Yep, real estate index admiral. And then I'm gonna simulate. And here, is 1.8 million. So you are safe 
In this case, you are safe, but money is not enough. Right? Such a big variation. The previous one at 5.5, this one is 1.8. And if you see the histograms, this is what it is. So we are probably here, 50% here. This is almost normal distribution. All right, so that's that. Let's pick another one. Uh, let's go this one. These are mutual funds. So I have dividend stocks now. I have this, the VBIX and VWI. These are popular retirement funds, actually. I was researching. And then here, Kager is pretty low, 9.63, 1.5 million. All right. Now I will show you. I mean, I can go through other portfolios. The answers will be quite similar. Um, I will show you the stock portfolio I have. And I always... I mean... It, the Amazon is not going to perform, my guess, Amazon is not going to perform as good as last 10 years. So there are a lot of assumptions. Tesla may not perform that. But let's simulate the 400K. Again, this is our inputs. 400K for 15 years. What's going to happen with this stock portfolio? And I got some ETFs also here. It's showing me the asset allocation. And 32%, $26 million, 400K. <laughs> That's because these stocks did perform super excellent, Netflix and uh, Tesla. They did perform, you know, unbelievable. If, so if I had this portfolio 10 years back, this is exactly what the, my numbers would be. And so let's remove let's remove some guys. For example, Tesla was a big contributor. Uh, Netflix was a big contributor, some reducing 10%. NVIDIA was a big one. And uh, let's say Apple. And I'm going to use the 20% deficit in, say, PTI, total stock market. 500% now, if you remember, let's remember this, 26 million at 58% time, 32% Kager. Now I removed the big guys and it's 9 million. 32 became 23. <clears throat> Still 23% Kager is awesome. All right, so these are stocks. I can, I have my own uh, ETF aggressive. I think I, uh, let's have ETF moderate. There you go, just three stocks, 300, 360 stocks in VGT, 350 stocks in S&P 500, and 4,000 in total stock. Here I'm taking some risk. These two guys are, this is America's top 500 companies. This is the whole stock market. And 60.70, I like this number, 4 million, 10x. 400K become 4 million in just mutual uh, ETFs, just three ETFs. So 300 companies plus 500 companies plus 4,000. Now, of course, there, there's some overlap. Apple is here, here, and here. So... And uh, let's look at the histogram. It's pretty, very well curved, right? So now someone will say 50% doesn't mean, 50% is my safety, my assumption that to be safe. I can be greedy and so it can be 6.8 million. But there are very less probability of reaching that target. This one has high probability, and this one has the maximum. 
right? So this is this is so if I look at the PowerPoint, that asset that this is that orange asset allocation. This is still sixty five. At sixty five, you'll have four million, six million, whatever. But what about afterwards, right? So we may need a combination. We need a simulation where I'm going to do. So this is that sec the second option after Monte Carlo. This is the tool used, and here this is very interesting. So here, years to so I'm 45. I I have 15 years to go before I uh, retire. Glad a glide path. So slowly it mellows down. Slowly it goes into asset allocation. Slowly merges to the second asset allocation. We're going to provide two asset allocations here. All right. So what is that glide? What is that blending? So let's say 10 years. I'm going to use tickers, my own tickers. I have 400,000 at 45 year age. Just want to make sure it's 400. Yeah. And then the simulation period in years. So 15 before retirement plus 20 before I die. So I have 35 years. And then remaining, I'm going to leave as this. And I'll, I'll change this to statistical to see the difference, keeping same parameters. The remaining, I'll leave this as is. This is portfolio one, starting portfolio 45. So I'm younger. I'm not retired. So I'm going to pick an aggressive ETF. Let's, I'm going to pick aggressive ETF. Right? Well, this could be too aggressive. Then let's go moderate. All right, this is perfect. And I'm gonna run the simulation, but no, I need to also provide the ending portfolio. So ending, I'm gonna go, just imagine at 65, you may have four, six million dollars. You're gonna play safe. Absolutely, you're gonna play safe. So I'm gonna pick a conservative portfolio where Nothing in NASDAQ, 50% in S&P, 25% in this, and VTI. And I'm going to have this run for 20 years in retirement. If I don't like this, I can use the Investopedia. All right. And then what are my goals? So when I retire, I'm going to withdraw 4%. Which starts at retirement happens every year till I die. That's what I, that logic is embedded here. All right, and you can have several goals. So in this case, that's, this is what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna run the simulation. So now I have two portfolios, aggressive and conservative. It's showing me, this is my aggressive one. We have a lot of stuff in VGT. Um, well, they look same actually. Four, five, fifty. Wait here. Yeah, they look same. So I'm gonna go change it. Let's put. I'll put the Investopedia one, or I'll put this guy. I like this dividend funds. I'm gonna run this. All right. So starting aggressive. I have some technology stuff, 500, and then total stock market. 75% are in large caps, almost large caps. Here, retirement, I'm going at the dividend, balance index, Wellington. I'm going to say my goal is to withdraw 4% at 65th year for next um, 25 years or 15 years, sorry, 20 times. Right, 65 plus 15 more years. And these are the Kagers. 14.63 is the total. This is till you die from 45 to 80. 35 years, average annual return is 14%. You're going to have $21 million when you are 80 years old. 
but 21 million, so 35 years of simulation, usually the money, the price of products double almost every 28 years, assuming 2.5 to 3% uh, yearly inflation. Right? So, but today's dollars is 9.7 million. At that time, at 80 age, your kids will see 21 million. If you die, they'll get that. And this is the breakdown. So you are 45 here. You are 55 here. At 55, you have 1.8 million. So now you're thinking, is, is that enough to retire early? At 60, you have 3.5 million. At 65, you have 5.5 million. And then it goes on till you are 21 million. I'm looking only at 50th percentile. And then this is the cash flow, that 4%. So first year, uh, the 16th year, right? So you're 45. So you're going to retire 60th, 60th. So you're going to get 143K. Then 156, it goes on increasing, increasing. And let's say at 25th, so 45 plus 25, at 70 years, you're going to withdraw 317K and so on. This is today's dollars. Same. Here, one thing uh, so 10,000 portfolios survived all withdrawals. That means is 4%, was it too much? That's what the simulation did. And all of portfolios simulation said, no, no, you're fine. In fact, the perpetual withdrawal rate, they think is you can withdraw up to 10%. All right, so 21 million, see the variance, 21 million, 58 percentile, 98 percentile is 43 million. Now let's say aggressive, I'm going to use in the starting portfolio, let's say I'm in a stock market, stocks. So I'm going to use those stocks. Same thing, I'm going to continue this. So this stocks have a compounding of 35 years. Not all will succeed. But see the numbers, 81 million, and the 98% is 198 million. Average Kager is, for 50th percentile, is 19. Asset allocations matter. This number, the growth is so huge that if you add all your contributions monthly, uh, yearly 20,500, that's peanuts in front of this. All right, so look at the, oh, and the glide, glide, glide path. So I said, start from the 10th year. So 10th year, it's going down. And now we are into the portfolio number two, asset allocation number two. Expected returns. <clears throat> so 50th percentile. 34% probably, no, 34% Kager. And then here is 20.05. Now, this example, let's look at with uh, statistical variance. Statistical mean instead of his historical data, I'm going to say historical return. I'm going to say, why don't you analyze statistically each company return, come with the mean and standard deviation, and use that data. And then let's see. So I gotta remember the number here 81 million. Hmm. It's not running. Oh, okay, it was running. And it became 70 million. 18.6, anything about 12% is amazing. It's awesome. All right, so this is, a sim again, this is a simulation tool. This is 
based on, in this case, this is based on statistics, but the historical returns may or may not happen, right? The projections like this, these are hypothetical in nature, do not reflect actual investment results and are not guarantee of future results. But you will get an idea. You will get an idea that what is the average CAGR for the portfolio I have or what's the history in the last 10 years, 15 years? And can I withdraw? So in this, the what I would simulate this is, you may think 4% is not enough. You may think 4%, so 15, okay, 12%. So in the first year of retirement, you're getting 400K, 480K. And you may think that's not enough. I want to try with, a uh, larger number. I'm going to say I'm going to withdraw because I'm going to buy six houses and a beach and whatnot. Eight percent. Running in the bedroom, I think. So of course, that number is going to go down 29 million because it has less money to invest or grow. So your kids, this is this is your legacy. This is the will. So you are living like a king here. Around 960K, almost million dollars each year in retirement you're withdrawing. In the last year, like $2.2 million. And after all that, assuming you use all that money, your 29 million remaining, which is today is 13 million. All right, so um, the question that someone may ask, 400K at 45, how did you come up with? So I quickly show you uh, the Excel we have. And so let's say, for example, and this, this now this is where you play a role with your kids. Say so your kid graduated from school at age 22, and you were successful to convince him to put max 401k at 1700, and we are saying just do it till 45. At 45 years, 1.5 million. Okay, so he's doing for 23 years and he has $0 saved. Remaining money, as long as he does, does this, other money he can spend, do whatever he wants to, as long as he maximizes his 401k, it's going to be at 1.5 million. If I use this 1.5 million in our simulation, That's 1.5. And now I'm going to, at 45, I'm going to just follow the, not the stocks, but something easy. So let's say conservative. Four ETFs. Nothing in QQQ and leave this. And then the portfolio two, I think that's already conservative. Yeah. And then I'm gonna run it. So at 45, he has 1.5 million. And this is his allocation. And he has 33 million based on this allocation. So your kid can also do this analysis. And, you know, maybe he will, he will decide, I got to go aggressive more till 60. And uh, he may even say here, I used to retirement, he wants to retire at 55. He wants to retire at 55, so 10 years. 
and so the for uh, 55, 55 plus so he has simulation period is 35 yeah that is same so it's going to start withdrawing well one thing i forgot to change here is the withdrawal rate we got to use 4% The money is huge, 4% is enough. Yeah, $57 million. He can retire at 55 and withdraw 4%. This is at the age 55. Remember, 40, 45 was here, plus 10. At the 55th year, he's withdrawing 250K, then this, and so on. Perpetual withdrawal, he can withdraw up to 10.56. Right. So the difference here is he's actually re he's stopping retirement uh, contribution at 45. My, my this calculator is saying is, let's say, for example, he stopped here contributing. And then the money grew at 9% each year. Then also it will be 8.7 million. Now just think this way. His employer is matching. So we're going to add 2,200, 2 million has gone to 2 million. And so his wife joins and she also contributes 1,000 a month or something. So on an average, let's say over the next 23 years, both of them put 3,500, including employee match, 3.2 million. And that 3.2 Here with the four person, with the aggressive and conservative portfolio, a massive 122 million. At the age of, uh, so he's 45. At the age of, did I change that 40? All right, so he's, he's getting, he's retiring at 55. At the age of 55, he's going to have $13 million at the age of 55. So this, this is simply math. This is possible. And the, the simulation says, uh, and if you want to play safe, uh, you can take 25th percentile. 76 million and 122 will not make a big difference and your house will be bigger. That's it. How many Lamborghinis and all that you will have? How many vacations you will do? So, Anyway, so this is this is simulation. Um, I have many other calculators, many other useful tools that you guys already know. And one of them, one of the good ones that I like, really like, that you guys can play is the early retirement Excel. This is awesome. So let's say you have a target to retire at 65 or 45 right now, 5,000 is your expense, monthly expense. And you have 2.5 million. And can, can will this 2.5 million, you know, feed your lifestyle till, till you die? So 80 is where I'm saying I'm going to die. And if you see here, you're going to have $12,000 of income each month. Your expense is the 5,000 expense. With the inflation became 8.19, 8193. You're still saving 4,000 each month, which is about 50,000 each year. The thing is, you're withdrawing 5%, and the money is growing at 7%. Simple math. And you can see year by year. This is charted in that simulation. And this is a flat percentage that I'm using here. Because I'm using two guys working to double social security, but let's say for 36,000. And if you put 6,000, 6% more, you're withdrawing 6% and you're gaining seven. So you never run out of money. At age 95, you have 2.9 million. But say your kids will get 2.7 with this rate. Now, if you say, if you manage to get above SP 500, 9%. Almost four million dollars 
uh, 80s when I lost my dad, but say 3.6 million dollars at 80 plus your house. And then how much money you are saying 11,000 is what you're getting the retirement income from your investments. 8193 is your expense. 3,500 in $1,000 you can get a maid and a cleaning ladies. In $2,000, you can live like a king in the same house. And as far as vacations, first five years will be done. So it could be at the fifth year, you have you may have so much in your savings account that you may not need to withdraw at the sixth year from your investment accounts. Right? But this is perpetual. Throughout, till age 93, 30% is your saving rate. Something is not right with this number. Hmm. I have to check. But anyway, so this is this is uh, is a quick and dirty thing. This Excel is there in the zip files. All right. Any anything else with the visual uh, with the simulation? Any questions? Are you guys on mute? Okay. All right. So Anishma, this is a lot of information. We'll have to... <laughs> I know. This sounds very fascinating, Namishbhai. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> it's a glimpse in your future, right? So yeah. but it should help I'll... your future planning. This just shows that how much discipline and regular thing can create wealth. Yeah. Yeah. And so, see, people always in our group, we always talk about make sure you max out your 401k, make sure you max out your 401k. That is the first requirement. But the second requirement, no one talks about. We are talking about, that's why I get unhappy with the CD and all those discussions. This matters. This is matter. This matters more. And when you are young, your snowball has to be big. You have to play aggressive. And compounding, it looks, compounding is, as I said, first million will take more than 10, 15, 20 years. The second, third million will be half and half. And then then eventually when you have 10 million, you will gain 1 million in two years. So your snowball, this is, you got to do this snowball. My suggestion is anybody younger than 45 needs to go for 12%. How can you get 12 persons? That's your research with mutual funds and ETFs, and then simulate in the system. All right, let's switch to the stocks. So Kunal, uh, you will be doing the talking here with the stocks. I'll start with the high level. So if you guys remember a few couple of months, or maybe a month back, we had sessions, Zoom sessions on discussing. It started with Warren Buffet guiding the kids that if you had to take only 10 investment decisions, sorry, 20 investment decisions in your life and then leave it for next 30, 40 years, what would those 20 investments decisions be? So in our case, we converted that into say companies. And we had discussions on what defines a good company, what will generate Z like it. We define the criteria and then we 